This week on Choice Hacking. Spotify, the music streaming service, has one of the most admired digital experiences in the world, with more than 570 million monthly active users and an impressive 226 million paying subscribers. It's not just a good user experience, it's a wildly profitable business. But how did the streamer become one of the world's biggest and most admired companies? Unsurprisingly, it's down to a bit of psychology and behavioral science applied knowingly or not to Spotify's marketing and customer experience. I'm Jennifer Kleinhens, and you're listening to Choice Hacking, a podcast about what makes buyers tick, from psychology to behavioral science, neuromarketing, and more. Join me today as we unpack the psychology behind Spotify's enviable customer experience and how we can use the lessons of its success to grow our own brands and businesses. But before we get started, I want to take a few seconds to tell you more about Choice Hacking and who we are. Choice Hacking isn't just a podcast. We also offer online courses, team training, coaching, and consulting to brands of all sizes, including startups, scale-ups, and Fortune 500 brands. We're based out of London and New York and have clients across the U.S., Canada, Europe, Australia, and more. Some of the amazing clients our team have worked with include brands like Starbucks, McDonald's, T-Mobile, O2, Lloyds Bank, and even big ad agencies like Havas and DDB. If you're interested in learning more about how we can help you grow your business with behavioral science, AI, and marketing psychology, just visit choicehacking.com to learn more. That's choicehacking.com. Now, on to the show. In 2006, Daniel Ek and Martin Lawrenson founded Spotify in their native Stockholm, Sweden. Eck had had the idea to start a peer-to-peer music service when Napster, one of the original music sharing platforms, was shut down and another illegal streaming service called Kaza stepped in to fill the void. Eck recognized that there was clearly customer demand for streaming music, so he set out to create a platform that was, quote, better than piracy. And so Spotify was born. In marketing circles, Spotify is probably best known for their yearly customer data report slash marketing campaign called Spotify Wrapped. Now, if you're unfamiliar, the Spotify Wrapped campaign is one of the most admired and copied marketing campaigns around for good reason. It summarizes and ranks a customer's annual Spotify usage data, rebranded as Your Year in Audio. Spotify pops that data into a beautiful animated presentation that users can easily share on social media. Now, if you've worked in an advertising agency or as a marketer at any point between December of 2016, when the first Spotify Wrapped was launched, to right now, you've probably been asked by a client, how can we do something like Wrapped with our customer data? Lots of brands have tried to imitate Spotify Wrapped, but with very limited success. And that's down to a few behavioral science and psychology principles that work really well in the context of Spotify Wrapped and Spotify's users, but that not every imitator seems to understand. The most obvious psychological principle at play in Spotify Wrapped is the cocktail party effect, which says that we naturally pay more attention to personalized information. I actually did a deep dive into this principle in Season 1, Episode 9 of the podcast, if you want to give that a listen. The cocktail party effect got its name because Colin Cherry, the British psychologist who coined the term, studied what happened when people overheard someone mention their name at a crowded 1960s cocktail party. When their name was mentioned, participants' ears perked up and their brains were able to filter out unnecessary noise to listen in and focus on what people were saying about them. And something similar happens when we see personalized marketing. Spotify's wrapped campaign is all about personalization, using a medium that is also uniquely emotional, their musical taste. But Wrapped isn't successful just because it's personalized. The report takes disparate information and it weaves a personal story about each user, which people find fascinating because of something called narrative bias. Narrative bias describes our tendency to make sense of the world through stories. 
Our brains have to process a lot of information, so to make it easier to understand and remember, we tend to create stories. And when a brand like Spotify knits together a story about our listening behavior that makes us seem interesting and unique, we really want to share it. The last psychological principle at play in Spotify Wrapped is something called signaling. Now, this is a critical one for the marketers and entrepreneurs in the audience. Signaling describes behavior that conveys something about ourselves to others, whether it's actually true or not. Brands, for example, are huge tools for psychological signaling. For example, we might choose an iPhone over a Samsung because we consciously or unconsciously want to signal that we're creative, innovative, and financially well-off. The popular HBO show Secession even used phone brands to signal who was considered in or outside of the trusted inner circle. Members of the guarded Roy family were always shown with iPhones, while Tom Wamscams, an outsider often teased for his Midwestern roots, used a Samsung. But how does Spotify Wrapped use signaling? Well, when users get their personalized video, they're encouraged to share it on social media. And if they feel like their Wrapped makes them look good or sends a message about their personal identity that they want others to see, they are much more likely to share. Last year, Spotify even assigned a Myers-Briggs-style personality to each user based on their musical activity. One example was The Specialist. This personality type was labeled FNVU for familiarity, newness, variety, and uniqueness. Users were told, quote, you're selective with the music and artists you listen to, but you've got lots of love to go around. Once you decide you like an artist, you're all in. Moving beyond Wrapped, one thing that Spotify has consistently nailed is understanding and enabling the social power of music. Whether that's allowing folks to like songs and artists, to share their playlists and activities, or even make collaborative playlists, Spotify realized that music's power is in its ability to connect us to other people, and they've used some psychological principles to heighten this effect. The endowment effect says that when we own or intend to own something, we feel more emotionally bonded to that thing. And the IKEA effect, which is a subtype of the endowment effect, says that when we create something, we value it more highly. Both of these effects come together in the collaborative playlist feature. This allows you to create group playlists where everyone in the group can add songs. Users feel even more emotionally attached to the songs and to each other when they work together to create a playlist. And if you're not in the mood to get crafty with friends, Spotify will create an AI-driven personalized blend of two or more people's musical taste to encourage co-listening and shared playlists. This feature also leverages the endowment and IKEA effects to make users feel more connected to their friends through music using Spotify. And last, social norms are those unwritten laws that every community or subculture has that seems to be baked into our DNA, and it dictates what's acceptable or unacceptable behavior. And for many folks, the music that their social groups listen to is dictated in part by social norms. A death metal lover probably isn't hanging out with too many Taylor Swift fans. Obviously, there's no reason why they couldn't be best friends, but studies have found that the musical genres we prefer are related to how we process information and understand the world around us. If you want to apply these principles like Spotify has, here's a few questions you can start with. First, every brand in the world has tried to capture Spotify's lightning in a bottle when it comes to Wrapped. But how does your brand use personal data in an interesting and ethical way? Can your users' data help bring them closer to their friends and family with your product as the platform? And last, take a minute to think about the social side of your product. What role does your brand or product play in people's friendships and social lives? How can you encourage them to use your product in a more shared and social way? Thank you for listening to the Choice Hacking Podcast. If you enjoy this episode, please rate and review it. It takes me 20 plus hours to create every episode, and it helps the podcast find new listeners when it has more ratings and reviews. And don't forget, you can learn more about behavioral science and marketing psychology applied to business when you subscribe to the free Choice Hacking Ideas newsletter. You'll join more than 8,000 brilliant entrepreneurs and marketing folks from companies like Google, Coke, Disney, McDonald's, and Starbucks who get my newsletter. To sign up, just visit choicehackingideas.com. That's choicehackingideas.com. Until next time. I hit a
for the job, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now these cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte like I play for Hornets.